Hey guys, today is Saturday, February the 11th of 2023, and I wanted to do an update of the S&P or ES futures. So without any further delay, let's get into it. Hopefully you understand my nose is getting a little better. Nashville, Tennessee's allergies are pretty bad. I'm from the uh, East Coast. And ever since I moved out here, this is the season where it knocks me out. So hopefully I could be... Uh, understanding but please forgive me so uh i'm going to post a link or a video at the end of this video to show you uh the beginning of this uh forecast so we're now at an important stage where it's going to be interesting are we going to continue going higher to test these highs or we're going to pull back into march so i'm going to show you uh what the data is saying um I'm going to try to be unbiased as I can. I'm going to show you things that are bullish and I'm going to show you things that are bearish. I'm using data from 2000, keeping it consistent. And uh, I had a look at my video just to kind of see what I was seeing and what, uh, what uh, the data was showing back then in uh, December. I posted that video around December the 30th or 31st. And uh, not a lot has changed on the video on December was uh, there was a weekly cycle of uh, 388 and uh, 180. And that kind of still remains the same. So we have the 386. Maybe things have shifted because these are dynamic cycles. Uh, on the video, it says that there's going to hit a trough around May. Uh, now has pushed to June. So this is a bearish cycle. That means that the cycles are down. Doesn't mean it's going to continue going down to June. You know, it could, but as of right now, that's what the data is saying. It could, it, it could either go sideways or go down, or it could just go in reverse or inverse and just continue going higher. So you just, you just never know. But this is the ones that normally concern me on the weekly. The next one is the uh, 180. On the 180, on the uh, December video, uh, I said that we were going to hit a trough somewhere around January the 10th. And you can see now that it has shifted to the February, the 13th or 14th. So this cycle remains down and you can see that we're kind of chucking along, grinding higher. And now we hit a trough here. Now this cycle goes up to like May 15 of 2023. So these are the two uh, big important ones from this data set in regards to this time frame of 2000 to uh, current prices right now on a weekly chart. And then in regards to the dominant cycle, things shifted there. I can't remember, I think I said uh, dominant cycle was 34 on the, vi the video. It's a little more fractal. You can see that it has, you know, quicker swings. You can see that right here, this is December. so. This is the dominant cycle from back then. You can see that the cycle went up, price action came down, uh, and then it nailed it here. And now we're hitting a peak, which is interesting enough where I'm thinking maybe we could get a little toppy and maybe get a pullback. Uh, but I'm kind of pushing more around March, you know, if, you know, just guessing I could be wrong. But we hit a little peak here and then somewhere around the 24th, the dominant cycle uh, back then when it was uh, dominant. Now this one is uh, not the dominant cycle. The dominant cycle now from uh, as of today's date is the 17th. So it's even more fractal. Interesting. So you can see, actually, yeah, you can see that it picked the swing low, swing high, swing low. Kind of picked a swing high, kind of went sideways, and now, as of January, well, you could say January the 23rd, now it hits a peak somewhere around February the 13th, 14th, which kind of lines up with my forecast now that this has shifted. 14, 15, 16, anywhere around there, it gets toppy, and then it got, you know, get a pullback, but we'll see. Uh, we'll take it one day at a time. So that's what's, you know, showing here. You know, the dominant cycle is one of those things that you could probably play it as a swing trade, but, you know, you just got to be cautious and careful. But, you know, just, just back testing it in hindsight is not that bad, you know. So once we hit February 14, 15 around there, if it's going to continue chucking along, just, just be cautious. Then it goes down to uh, the 21st. 
kind of, you know, if you take the, what is it, the 34 and the 17, just those dominant cycles, you can see the, where it hits a peak somewhere around the 11th, 12th, then it goes back down. Uh, so that's it for the uh, weekly cycle. So uh, to uh, get a conclusion here, the big one is down. That one is concerning. The 180 is about to turn. It's about to get bullish. So you got a shorter one and a bigger one. You know, you got the blue pill, the red pill. Let's see which one uh, uh, ES is going to follow. In regards to uh, spectrum, you know, cycle analysis on the weekly chart, you got the two ones. And then the uh, 17 is more fractal, kind of more for swing trading, uh, just in and out. Uh, I might have to, you know, back test this and see how accurate and good it is. But that's, that's, that's what uh, the weekly cycle is saying. Let's go to the daily and see what we can extract from the daily. Okay, so on the daily chart, I was using data from 2016. I'm going to start using data from uh, 2018. And some things have changed, not, not by much. There's two important cycles here. Is the, uh, on the video, it was 303. 303 still remains uh, a bigger cycle. And on the video, I said in December... <clears throat> Uh, the 303 uh, peaked in February the uh, 10th. Uh, uh, oh, it hits a peak, actually. It's going to be hitting a peak around February the 10th, which is somewhere around here. And it's close because now it's shifted to February the 24th. That's when it hits a peak. But I don't, you know, I take the peaks as important, but pretty much is more like a bell curve. This is kind of like the area zone where it could peak here. It could peak a little bit over here. You know, it could peak somewhere in the middle. Uh, so it's kind of like in that ballpark. Not that it exactly, but I just kind of like to give you the dates because I always feel sometimes that, you know, just the peak, knowing the peak at least is important. Is that when you could just see the wiggle room between now, uh, between, the, you know, like a bell curve from up here. So... I said on that video, February the 10th, and now it's shifted to February the 24th, and that's the uh, 303, uh, and then it goes down into the future. So interesting enough that February it gets, gets very peaky, if that's a word, peaky, interesting. Uh, the 180 cycle, which is on the video in December, was 82, so it kind of shifted down, you know, two notches. And uh, on the video, I said uh, we hit a trough somewhere around January the 20th, and it came a little early. This is a 80, 180. So January the 10th, we hit a trough, and now we hit a peak somewhere around April the 18th. So these are the two strong ones within uh, the 2018 to current prices right now in this time frame. Uh, and then the uh, dominant cycle... I can't remember what the dominant cycle is, but the dominant cycle here on this time frame is uh, 85. Uh, it's not as strong, but we gotta look at it. Uh, you can see, yeah, it peaks, it gets some good swings. And now this cycle is down, hits, hits a trough February the 10th, and you can see that we have been going up. And now it hits a peak around March the 24th. So this one is bullish. Now I did a composite, I think on the video, looking back of uh, 303 and the 180, the two cycles together. Somewhere it peaks around April the uh, 3rd. And now we take this uh, dominant cycle, which is uh, 85, which is the smallest one, and take the uh, 180 by itself. This is you see that we hit a trough here, but, you know, we, from December the 28th, we've been just chucking along higher. And, you know, it could, you know, go up to March the 28th. Or it could go back down, which I'm kind of leaning. Uh, but, you know, it's one of these things, it's like, you got some technicals pointing this way, and then you got some technicals pointing the other way. But this is the bullish view. Uh, if you take the... Uh, Eight, uh, the 85 with the 303, and this is what you get. So it kind of pulled back here and went up here. 
Now when this pull back, and now it goes up. So just using those two, um, it's it's pretty bullish going into March. Uh, now on the other clips I'm going to be showing you, I'm going to be showing you things that are kind of more negative. So, but at least you get both pictures for bulls and bears. So, uh, to conclude, the 303, uh, it's going to get you know very toppy here, February 24th. So you probably have a little more to go. In regards to the daily, the uh, 180 is still bullish. It goes all the way up to April the 18th. So that's that's good. And a little more fractal for swing traders, or, you know, in and out. Uh, we're about to hit a trough. You can see that's right here. And it goes up to like uh, March. So that's going to be bullish too in regards to the daily uh, cycles. Okay, so in regards to uh, seasonality, percent of months in which spot closed higher than it opened from 2019 to 2023. We see that February is a little strong, it's a little above 50%, but March, April, May, June, July are kind of strong and they're kind of consistent. And then July gets a nice little bump to the top. Then you can see that August will be September. It's the weakest. That's a five year. Let's go to 10 year. You can see that uh, March is a little above 50%. Uh, so April all the way to July, Pretty strong. 15, you can see that February, March, April, and July are the strongest. So 20 year, March, April, and May. Pretty interesting data uh, using the SPY. So that's what the data is showing. And we, you know, we'll look at other stuff just to see if there's any uh correlation or divergence uh or gets inverted but that's what the data is showing in regards to the uh spy okay so this is another uh, seasonality i look at and you can see that we've uh, chuckled along pretty good since uh december 30th and kind of getting toppy here february 6 and these are closed let's look at the uh, five year the five year gets toppy around the uh, 15th, but you can see that it kind of gets flat. It's a nice little uh, uh, bull trap and then pushes down all the way to uh, March. We had the uh, 10 year and the 10 year roughly around February 15th. You could say 14, 13, 14, 15, 16. Give yourself some wiggle room, you know. Two, 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 two days to the left, two days to the right. But the peak somewhere around is the 15 on average. At the uh, 15 year, kind of the same thing in that ballpark, that bell curve right there. And then the uh, five year pulls uh, all the way to March 22nd. Uh, you can see that the uh, 15 year around March 7th and then kind of goes sideways. And the uh, 10 year, somewhere around March 22nd. So somewhere around March it gets weak and you know you uh, notice the other uh the other chart I showed you shows that March is pretty strong. So I don't know, I mean this is the ES. I used the spy. I don't know if this if this should be you know a big divergence like that. Uh but this is what the data is showing. So you got, you know, two things that are kind of mixed in opposite direction. There's a pullback into March. The other ones are pretty strong. Either way, just be uh, cautious around uh, pretty much next week. Uh, can it, you know, push higher around 14, 15 and do a little capitulation and then tank? Some news comes out and, you know, it gets all crazy again. Uh, you know, I don't know. This is what the data shows on average, at least you know. And if things get a little wonky and crazy, you know what could be the probability of us pulling into March. So that's what the seasonality is showing here. Okay, so this is my Elliott Wave uh, chart. And this is the monthly. I haven't even looked at this in the longest, I guess, since uh, December. So whatever is showing now is because that's what I've had from uh, December the 31st or the 30th. And uh, you see this is a Wave 3. I mean, maybe this adjusted. I can't remember what this was in the video, if I ever did the monthly, but 
wave three, four. So you know what? It's expecting a wave five. Um, so if that's that's the case, it's uh, bullish in regards to the mo uh, monthly count. An Elliott wave. So looking at the weekly, <clears throat> you can see that we hit a five A B C one two. A three, four, or working on a three, or we're at a three. So it'll be interesting to see how that's going to play out. Let me see the Stokes. Yep, Stokes are positive, positive on the uh, weekly. What I have here, <clears throat> I have some targets here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, this is where we're at right now. This looks like it's uh, so the target was somewhere around 4258 all the way to like 4359. Looks like I have here, and then even higher. I have one here, uh, but it wasn't related to time, I guess. It was more like a level, and it's kind of right there right now. Uh, let's look at... Got any GAN stuff? No. Nope. No. Nope. Pretty simple. Uh, now, this is the daily chart, and you can see that now the Stokes is telling you we're getting a little toppy here. Be careful. Let's see what it's telling us there. You get this little capitulation to fake out, pull back, and then this is where you want to accumulate. Down here, this is when it was getting a little bearish. Time to maybe start, you know, going contrarian. And then the Stokes catching this nice move. So we're kind of like here. Same thing here. See, I warned you. Getting toppy here, be careful. And boom, you went short here. It was nice. Uh, so from my forecast, it was like somewhere around here where we left off and we got this nice little rally. Uh, so it's four and this is uh, five, one, two, three, four, five, or an ABC correction coming. I don't know. We'll see. Now let's put some of my indicators here. So interesting. The ellipse picked it up right here. So this is where the target is. There's some up here. And uh, this is a target to the downside. Uh, it's 24, 23rd, 24th, 23rd. So yeah, so that's what the count is. Um, I guess keep an eye on the 14. Look at that. This is a, a, a ellipse techniques I've been using for a long time. And it's one of those things, you don't know what direction is going to go, but the volatility is going to explode. And I always use it as on the 14, it could come in a little early in the 13, or it could be after the 14, which would be the 15. And that's kind of lining up even with the other seasonality stuff that I've been showing you that the 14, 15, 16, this is what I call clusters. If you've been watching my video a lot, I, this is what I like to look for. I think this was one against technique. He was just way smarter than I am. So I kind of piggyback on his uh, theory and his analysis. So this is the kind of cluster I'm looking for. You know, there's something, there's a lot of things lining up in a certain day or in that week that it's of importance. And if it's going to turn, it could be somewhere around there or it's going to be a capitulation going up and then go down. It could possibly be somewhere around here. So keep an eye on that 14, you know, 13, 15 seasonality. Remember that 15, 16, you know, 14 around there. This is what I call the hot zone. So keep an eye on that. I don't think there's anything else for me to show. We'll go to the next clip, and that probably might be my last. I don't want to do the Astro stuff, the Afghan stuff. You already you look at my first video, you kind of see what I was thinking. March, there's a lot going on in regards to uh, Astro uh, trading. A lot of new planets are going into new signs. You know, if you believe in that or not, that's fine. Uh, but just wanted to show you that, you know, there's there's some kind of energy, energy shift that happens when these things happen. And sometimes a lot of things happen in the markets when these things happen. Uh, so it's just kind of like a heads up. OK, so this is my uh, last video. Um, like I said, I didn't cover the Astro stuff. You can look at the first video. You can kind of see because I don't want to make this video too long. I probably may have with all the stuff I just kind of talked about. But I just wanted to kind of recap where I left off. And what I like about, you know, forecasting and analysis is that the more you do this, the more little things you kind of learn and you uh, 
build experience and knowledge. That's the key. Even though you get it wrong, you're going to learn something about why you got it wrong. And I'd like to do these videos so other people can see, and then they can judge for themselves. For themselves. Excuse me. I'm trying to get a cup of coffee in there. Squeeze it in. My allergies are kind of just taking hold of me now, so I'm trying to fight it. So, let's get into it. So we left off here. That was my last forecast, and this is not showing. And now I'm going to show you what has happened. We've come up to here, second, and kind of chopping around here. We'll uh, put neural net. Let's start with that. This is more of the computer kind of picking out. Let's uh, hide that. So I ran the computer, uh, which is neural net. It's an uh, algorithm, it's, which is studies price action, and, it's, and it tries to forecast. So... I think the way of the future is using, you know, in my opinion, using GAN, Elliot, whatever you, technique or theory that you, a philosophy that you, you know, you believe strongly in or, you know, dabbling or just trying to, you know, figure out and, you know, with the help of a computer, because they're pretty, they're pretty good. You know, if you want to look at, uh, what is it called? A uh, chat GBT, just to kind of get an idea, uh, I, I saw a video on YouTube where this person, you know, is a musician. I'm a musician myself. I play piano and keyboards and, you know, produce stuff and make music. And they typed in a question. is like, I want you to write a song uh, about Tennessee and love. And the thing wrote a song, broke it down, uh, you know, intro. I mean, not intro, uh, verse, chorus, uh, second verse, bridge, you know, chorus, outro, and 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 typed it all in, you know, in a matter of seconds. I was blown away. It's something I probably might, I'm going to probably start dabbling. Because I'm not a great writer. I kind of hook up with different uh, songwriters, you know, to, you know, get uh, writing skills. But they say the best here are in Nashville and Tennessee, the best songwriters, because they really get down into the uh, words and the meaning. Uh, but anyway, I digress. What I wanted to really show you is that the computer was forecasting somewhere around uh, the 14th, you know, getting toppy, pull back somewhere around March. This is the computer. This is not me. I, I use it as a tool to help me in regards to forecasting. Kind of like, okay, so what, what the, you know, I call her, call the computer, but it's, it's neural net. I was like, what are you thinking? What, looking at all this price action in the past, what are your thoughts into the future? And this is what it came up with. So now once you put the price action, we're in this ballpark where there's a turning point. So then you look like, okay, so what is it with this 13, 14, 15, 16? There's a lot going on there. Seasonality wise, maybe the neural net is picking up on seasonality and it's, and, and it's easy to see this pattern. Uh, whatever it is, it gets toppy here. Is it going to play out? We don't know. But if you want to lean with probability, just in case uh, that there is a turning point, you're kind of looking at the patterns showing up. All we know is, you know, ES, S&P could continue chucking along and ignore this and it will be a bear trap and continue squeezing the uh, bears all the way, you know, even up to here. Uh, somewhere around June the 19th, it thinks, you know, there's a turning point. I, I used to say it's a swing high, but after using this uh, tool for a while, I've kind of realized that sometimes it doesn't get it right. But sometimes it goes down, you know, or is a swing low, and it's in the opposite of the uh, turning point, which I call a turning point. So in your mind, in your eyes, you kind of think that, yeah, we're going to go on high because that's, you know, it looks like price action. And it, and it may as well, you know, go continue going higher. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's bullish. Um, and, you know, maybe March is just a, a pullback, which I'm leaning there's going to be a little pullback. And there might be, you know, seasonality wise, it shows that March, it pulls back and then it goes up. You know, into May, June, July, you know, always September, October gets a little negative. So if we're going to try to go with probability and statistics and, you know, and all that, you know, jargon, then maybe this is going to, it could possibly play out. But if you don't know this and, you know, you're kind of like shooting in the dark and not, you know, like, what's going to go on with the S&P? At least you got some kind of roadmap 
just in case, you know, you don't know what direction, you know, CNBC, they're saying this, they're saying that, at least this is more, you know, mathematically, uh, with your seasonality and, you know, a little algo computer helping you. So this is what the, uh, computer is showing, uh, and then a possible pullback somewhere around, uh, it's picking March the uh, 18th. I will also keep an eye on April 7th, just in case it's a little head fake to trap some, uh, some bulls and then capitulate down and then shoot up. So I look at it like that. Uh, 16 and uh, 4, 7, just in case it pulls back those dates for possible swing lows. So let's take that out and uh, let's look at the, let's actually look at the uh, spectrum. I use a spectrum on this program also. And uh, you can see the red pulled back. Now the green here gets toppy. So these are the three cycles. I haven't changed them. And I did a composite of those. And this is what it's showing. Somewhere around uh, March. So you can see that now this is opposite of, you know, what I'm kind of like leaning. That maybe we have a pullback in regards to seasonality. But maybe this could just be inverted. Uh, and if price action goes down, look at this as a possible swing low. Uh, but if it doesn't and it continues going higher, then, you know, you just follow these, uh, this composite cycle. So that's what that's saying there. Uh, let's see. In regards to uh, the GAN square, I think I used the GAN square. And this is, uh, I believe this is not scaled. So I just, maybe it is. I can't remember right now. But either way, this is what I put here. Is I normally, you know, I've been in the habit now of uh, scaling it at 45 degrees and use, using GAN squares at a 45 degree scale chart. But off the top of my head, I can't remember if this is or not. So we'll just kind of take what this is right now, unknowing if it's scaled or not. Uh, either way, this is where we left off in price action. You see just chucking along here and... This is the uh, midpoint, which is the center of gravity, which is pretty much the 50% right here. And now we're kind of, you know, dancing around here. Uh, March the 23rd. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. This is where the square ends. So you see a lot of things lining up there too, right there, just by looking at that. So we go back up, uh, you know, 4155, center of gravity, uh, right there, half point could be interesting and if anywhere up there but we'll take it one step at a time it goes down 39.89 uh all the way to uh, 39.34 and if it continues pushing lower 38.22 are levels i'll be watching on the gan square and what else what else what else what else uh let's do some seasonality here uh, one again technique was look at 10 years in the past and see what price action has done and compare the fluctuations with the present and looking at 10 years ago it looks pretty bullish to me uh, if that's if this is going to play out now uh, let's look at 20 years you know it's, those are the two numbers I, I normally use between 10 and 20 and uh 20 years ago price action you know went down all the way around March the 11th and then started rallying which kind of lines up with the seasonality I've been showing you guys so uh, if it pulls back March the 11th 20 years ago was the swing low so a couple of things you know dates you want to probably if, if it pulls back you want to keep an eye on that date you know, I don't know if it's a, uh, actually we could tell here. It's a Saturday. So look for the, uh, look for the 10th is a Friday. The 11th is a Saturday. So look at, you know, the 10th Friday and then look at Monday, which is the 13th. Look at those dates in regards to a, a, a pullback. Then the annual cycle, it gets toppy here and we're close. And then it pulls back to like March the uh, 3rd, 4th around there and then it, it goes up that's the annual uh seasonality i'm sorry not cycle seasonality and then the annual and decimal pulled back to like the last week of march uh sorry february and then it goes up to uh may 
the fast annual. The bottom's out around the 16. The mid. Yeah, so when you put all of these up, it could get a little messy, but I could decipher through it because I've seen it so many times. We can zoom in. You can see that it's this one bottoms out early. Somewhere around the first week of March. And then this is where the hot zone is. And if you look at my last uh, video, when it ends, if you made it this far, there's a lot of stuff happening here in regards to the planetary movements and entering new signs that could create a, you know, a different energy. So it'll be interesting to see how that's going to play out. Uh, so, and those are my thoughts. It's, it's a coin toss here. Bullish and bearish. You know, it could uh, go either way. Uh, but either way, if it pulls down to March, I think that would be a great buying opportunity because seasonality shows that it goes up. If it continues going up, that means it's super strong and it's not going to pull back and it'll be a great opportunity to still get in and arrive the way to like May or June. Uh, if the uh, computer got it right. Yep. Around there. You see that October, September, it's bearish. But yeah, so this is right. You're still going to, you know, if it plays out, nothing crazy happens in the world. It could be okay. Now, if you get a pullback in March, just be uh, with cash, you know, ready. Any opportunity, build a position. One of your favorite stocks, you know, the uh, indices or whatever futures. And once you start seeing higher highs and higher lows, that's that's it. Especially if you're coming from a swing low in March. So, I'm going to sign out. Hope you like this video. I'm gonna, maybe I'll try to squeeze another video. The kids are starting to wake up. I'm hearing them making noise. So, I don't know if I might. But if I do... Uh, be surprised because I got to squeeze another one. Have a great weekend and I'll keep you posted on my thoughts on the ES or SMP 500.